name is Liz Parks. I am an art advisor based in New York City. I work with private collectors in both the United States and Mexico, and having clients on both sides of the border has afforded me the opportunity to travel to Mexico on a regular basis to attend art fairs and go to gallery openings and to get to know many of the contemporary artists that are working there today. And I would love to share a few of those artists with you right now that I find to be particularly noteworthy. The first artist whose work I would love to show you is Eduardo Terrazas, and you can see an example of his work behind me here. Um, Terrazas is in his 80s and he lives and works in Mexico City and he has made numerous contributions throughout the years in various fields such as architecture, um, he is trained as an architect, um, urban planning, design, and obviously art. In 1968 he, he co-designed the logo for the 1968 Olympics that were held in Mexico City and that logo uh, was inspired by the artistic makings of the Huichol people, who are an indigenous people that live in uh, Jalisco and neighboring states. Um, that logo, in turn, has informed his uh, the body of work for which he is best known, and the work that you see here is an example of it. Uh, the works are called, as a series, Possibilities of a Structure, and the work essentially is like, you know, what kind of freedom can you find when you are confined in some way? What are the, the possibilities within a, a limitation? So in this case, you're limited by the four sides of the square, and he makes drawing after drawing with different geometric shapes and lines uh, within that square. Those drawings are then translated to uh, a, the Weichel technique, which is this, it's yarn that has been placed on a wood support using an archival beeswax glue. Um, and so there's no sewing involved, it's just simply placed down. And the placement itself, um, when you see in the detail of this work, creates its own new set of geometric and line qualities to it. Um, so I've said the word geometric a lot and it is reminding me that uh, with his work, you know, you see a lot of work, you know, kind of like art historical buzzwords like geometric abstraction. There's also a conceptual nature to the work. But I think uh, for Terrazas, one of the greatest contributions that he has given is continuing um, and perhaps opening up to new audiences, continuing the, the practice of uh, a, an artistic form that has been going on for centuries. Um, as well and, and bringing it to a broader audience in, in perhaps a manner that might be more easily digestible for other cultures. Another noteworthy Mexican artist working today is Carlos Amorales. You can see an example of his work behind me here. Uh, Amorales was born in 1970. He lives and works in Mexico City and the majority of his work concerns language and communication. Um, but this is through kind of decodified ways of communicating, so you know, not necessarily speech or reading, um, but in more ephemeral manners, such as uh, signs and symbols, or sound, or gestures. And uh, he started a project in 1998 that he has worked on for some time, called the Liquid Archive, where that he has kind of fed for many years uh, with these symbols of communication that, that he finds noteworthy in some way. So he might uh, be looking at an image out in nature or take a photograph or be looking at a photograph um, and will admire the shape that is formed when someone has their hand on their hip. And so he would cut out this shape, put it into the Liquid Archive and hang on to it for future use. The work behind us here utilizes some of the shapes from the Liquid Archive. Uh, so here he had his studio assistants hold some of the shapes over a large piece of white paper and then he spray painted in black. And so the result that you get here is this kind of ghost-like representation of the manner in which the work was made. Another Mexican artist whose work I really admire is Jose Davila. Uh, Davila is in his 40s and he lives and works in Guadalajara. 
Uh, he was trained as an architect, uh, but has shifted his practice to being mostly of the artistic variety, and for that he is entirely self-taught. Um, much of his work deals with the oppositions that are inherent within the canon of uh, Western architecture and art history, and namely, like, why have we chosen specific architects and artists to represent that canon, and what are the successes and failures of our making those choices. Um, drawing on his architectural background, he works in both, uh, he does sculptural installations as well as photographic work, uh, but both of them incorporate elements of architecture into the work. Um, the, the work often explores the kind of ephemeral nature of physical structures and relating to that, especially with the, the photographic work, he often cuts out key elements of the work, um, that, which gives it more of a three-dimensional feel. Um, he often uses the work of prominent uh, kind of 20th century masters like Do uh, Donald Judd and Dan Flavin come to mind um, as a starting point. And he investigates their work and um, admires it, but also questions it, uh, appropriates it, reveres it, edits it, cuts into it, and ultimately um, reinvents it to uh, make his own unique artistic contribution. <laughs>